this is a proper horror story which showed the concept of devil and hell inside. There's a lot of different concept, which is a Polish monastery 1987 set inside where very mysteries and dark secret is hidden, then it to know, you have to complete this video, if you want to see it till the end, then let's go without any delay. In 1957, during a solar eclipse, a priest stealthily enters a church carrying a newborn baby with a distinctive mark on his left chest. Placing the crying infant on the altar, the priest begins to pray. However, his prayers take a sinister turn as he brandishes a dagger, denouncing the baby as an evil seed. Just then, Militia storm the church, ordering the priest to drop his weapon. Despite his pleas, the priest is shot, and the baby is rescued. Thirty years later, an undercover priest and exorcist named Father Merrick disembarks from a bus on a desolate highway. He lights a cigarette and consults a map before arriving at a church. Welcomed by a monk named Prior Andre, Merrick is thanked for his willingness to join them. Inside the church, Merrick meets several priests who, as Prior explains, operate a sanatorium for those influenced by the devil. The sanatorium serves as a refuge where troubled individuals seek healing. Merrick is introduced to Brother David, a versatile figure in the facility. During their meeting, David offers Merrick rosary beads, but Merrick politely declines, indicating he has his own. After an inspection of Marek's belongings, David confiscates his cigarettes, and the prior guides Merrick to his quarters, devoid of modern amenities but assured of comfort. Left alone, Merrick settles into his room, and as he changes, a familiar scar on his chest reveals his true identity, the same infant from the shooting incident three decades earlier. He unpacks his suitcase, revealing a concealed compartment housing a pistol, flashlight, and other prohibited items. Merrick also retrieves a newspaper clipping about a missing woman before closing his suitcase. The tolling bell signals the monks to gather in the dining area, where the prior leads a prayer before dinner. Merrick hesitates at the sight and smell of the food but eventually eats it, observing the other priests doing the same. After dinner, Merrick explores the sanatorium, encountering various chambers housing individuals believed to be possessed. In one chamber, he glimpses a woman with a priest before returning to his quarters for a shower. Unbeknownst to him, the crucifix in his room subtly trembles during this time. The following day, the prior arranges an exorcism session. Merrick joins the other monks in a room filled with lit candles, where he recognizes the woman from before. She lies bound on a bed, staring vacantly at the ceiling while the monks gather nearby. Father Pyotr, Prior Andre's second-in-command and vice-prior, positions himself to record the exorcism from across the room. Before commencing the ritual, Prior Andre assures the woman of her forthcoming healing. Merrick observes as the prior sprinkles holy water on the woman, causing her discomfort while leading the monks in a Latin prayer. As the intensity of the prayer grows, the woman convulses, rising from the bed and snarling at the prior. The bed trembles violently as she shrieks and thrashes about. Despite the prior's attempt to use a crucifix, it ignites in flames upon contact with the woman. Following the exorcism, Merrick returns to his quarters to freshen up. While looking in the mirror, it suddenly shatters upon his touch, startling him. Soon after, his wardrobe door creaks open with an ominous growl. Merrick, unnerved, ventures into the facility's hallway and discovers a mysterious door. As he moves to investigate, David intercepts him, explaining that entry requires the prior's invitation, prompting Merrick to retreat. During dinner, Merrick struggles to stomach the peculiar food, eventually succumbing to nausea upon his return to his room. He experiences a sudden pain in his jaw, prompting him to extract a tooth, which cracks open to reveal a buzzing fly. Panicked, Merrick examines his mouth in the broken mirror. Later that night, Merrick returns to the mysterious room, armed with a small metal tool from the cross of his rosary. He deftly picks the lock and enters, discovering it to be Pryor's office. Quietly rummaging through the shelves, he notices a small hole in a painting. Touching the painting triggers a hidden room to reveal itself behind the wall, containing cassette tapes and a television. Merrick plays a tape, revealing footage of the exorcised woman. Exiting the office, he revisits the exorcism room, where he uncovers mechanisms controlling the bed and artificial wind, as well as a lighter hidden behind the crucifix used during the ritual. Realizing the exorcism was staged, Merrick returns to his quarters, concealing the crucifix in a cabinet. Before proceeding further in the video, 99% of you enjoy watching our videos but do not subscribe. We need your support to make more amazing videos like this. That's why please subscribe to this channel and show us your love. The following day, 
The prior gathers the monks for another prayer session, summoning Merrick to lead. Hesitantly, Merrick steps forward but struggles to recite the prayer in Latin, prompting the prior to assign Father Pure instead. During dinner, Merrick unwittingly consumes strands of hair in his food, adding to his confusion. He abruptly chokes and coughs during his meal, hurriedly spitting out the food upon returning to his quarters. Casting a wary glance, Merrick notices the crucifix restored on his wall, sparking a sense of danger. He retrieves the pistol from his suitcase, stashing it in his pocket, and sets fire to the newspaper article about the missing woman. Confounded by the strange events, Merrick navigates the halls with a heavy sigh, grappling with his confusion. In frustration, he forcefully tugs at the chain gates, only to stumble upon monks digging a grave outside. Merrick revisits the chambers, seeking the possessed woman but finds them empty. Father Pyotr, the vice prior, quietly observes Marek's movements and summons him to the church, waiting in a confessional. Inside, they engage in a clandestine conversation. Pyotr cautions Merrick about the scrutiny he faces from the other priests, warning of the dangers in further exploration. Merrick discloses his true identity as an undercover officer investigating the missing women, dispatched to the sanatorium following an anonymous tip. He explains the militia's inability to conduct a conventional investigation due to a past altercation with a priest. In response, Pyotr unveils the staged nature of the possessions and exorcisms, designed to attract attention and funding from the Vatican. With a final warning, Pyotr departs, leaving Merrick to ponder his revelations. Returning to his room, Merrick scans for surveillance, discovering a hidden compartment behind a closet. Investigating further, he encounters a grotesque device comprising an eyeball and bone, triggering a violent reaction as he regurgitates dark liquid onto the floor. As the buzzing grows louder, more flies swarm from the dark liquid on the floor. Merrick, startled, glances at the door briefly before witnessing a hallucination of his face drenched in the mysterious substance. As night falls, he sneaks away to find the exorcised woman, heading to the graveyard to investigate the empty grave. Suddenly, Father David appears, covering Marek's head with a cloth. Upon awakening in his room, Merrick realizes he's bound to his bed, with his belongings confiscated by the monks. David watches as Merrick struggles against the ropes, joined by the prior, who expresses disappointment over their failed collaboration. Despite Marek's resistance, they force-feed him four portions of meat, causing him to gag and lose consciousness. Regaining consciousness later, Merrick finds David asleep. Seizing the opportunity, he frees himself and attempts to escape. David awakens and a scuffle ensues, culminating in Merrick overpowering and fatally shooting David. Before leaving, Merrick notices the bowls used for his meal and heads to the kitchen to investigate further. Inside a freezer, he discovers the mutilated bodies of the missing women he had been searching for. Merrick makes a startling discovery, he and the monks have been unknowingly consuming the organs of the missing women. Shocked, he bumps into Pyotr in the kitchen, and they both stare in disbelief at the grim revelation. Determined to escape, Merrick is called over by Pyotr to an ancient library. In the library, Pyotr reveals an ancient book detailing a ritual concerning the Chosen One. According to the ritual, if the Chosen One, born during an eclipse, isn't immediately killed, they will commit heinous acts before becoming a demon and bringing about the end of the world. Pyotr suspects Merrick is the Chosen One and that the monks are orchestrating the ritual to summon the devil. Though Merrick finds an image resembling the scar on his chest in the book, he refuses to believe the tale. Together, they devise a plan to escape, with Pyotr proposing a route through a hidden passage outside the monastery. To earn Marek's trust, Pyotr reveals scars from a supposed previous escape attempt. Trusting Pyotr, Merrick follows him through a small tunnel leading into a cave. Suddenly, they're ambushed by two monks who subdue Merrick. Realizing it was a trap, Merrick looks to Pyotr before losing consciousness. When he wakes, he finds himself surrounded by the monks of the church. Once again bound to a wooden pillar, Merrick finds himself surrounded by the prior and the church monks in their red cloaks. Prior Andre admits to intentionally luring Merrick to the sanatorium, revealing that the anonymous tips Merrick received were orchestrated by him. While apologizing for the deception, Prior Andre explains that their actions were driven by good intentions. According to Prior Andre, the Brotherhood believes that both God and the devil coexist, with humanity's inherent evil deserving punishment. They've constructed the sanatorium atop a supposed gateway to hell, waiting 800 years for Merrick, the Chosen One, to emerge. Upon completing the ritual, they anticipate the devil's emergence from the nearby well to inhabit Marek's body. 
To complete the ritual, they require the blood of an innocent, leading them to bring forth the previously exorcised woman. Despite Marek's efforts to intervene, the woman's throat is mercilessly slashed, and her blood collected into a bowl. Reluctantly, Merrick is coerced into drinking from the bowl by the prior. After the prayers and chants fail to summon the devil, confusion ensues among the church monks. Merrick chuckles weakly as prior Andre and Pyotr review the ritual steps, realizing they missed something. Despite searching the ancient book, they find no further instructions. Pyotr, feeling upset, subtly shifts blame to the prior. To appease the other monks, Pyotr admits to their mistake and orders everyone to resume their routine as if nothing happened. Concerned about Marek's fate, they plan for the possibility of militia intervention. Pyotr, facing Merrick, apologizes before unexpectedly stabbing him with a dagger. As Merrick loses consciousness, the monks untie him and toss him into the well. Later, the prior drowns his frustration in alcohol, unaware of the cross in his room turning upside down. Pyotr, finding the prior drunk, helps him to bed, but then suffocates him with a pillow. The next day, the monks burn the women's bodies while Pyotr, feigning grief, reveals the prior's death. He assumes the prior's responsibilities. Meanwhile, Merrick survives, awakening at the bottom of the well. Merrick slowly rises from the well, surrounded by bones, his body trembling violently. Inside the sanatorium, Pyotr and the monks pray for Prior Andre's soul. Suddenly, Pyotr convulses, losing control, dropping the ancient book, and gagging uncontrollably. The monks watch in confusion as Pyotr levitates, arms spread like a crucifix, then screams in agony, transforming into a swarm of flies. From behind the altar emerges the sabbatical goat demon, revealing the ritual's success. The demon, faceless and goat-like, startles the monks with a loud shriek, freezing them in fear. Attempting to flee, they find themselves immobilized. As they stand frozen, the Jesus statue turns towards the demon, and they levitate, forming an inverted cross. Outside, dead Flora revives, while inside, the living mimic the inverted cross. The demon's presence intensifies, causing the ceiling to split open. The sky roars with thunder, signaling the return of evil and the dawn of a new world order.